today the subject of the class is diffusion model. Especially, diffusion model is very useful in these days to generate new images. But probably in the future, probably 2024 or 2025, this diffusion model will be used for generating the texts and sounds and voices. But at this moment, the most hot methodology to generate new images generating a, among the generating AI is diffusion model. And today I'm going to give you the basic architecture and loss function of the diffusion models. It's useful for image generation. You remember uh, the variational autoencoder in the previous class, it has input image and it has encoder. In, input image is converted to G space by using encoder. And then we have decoder, finally we have degenerated image x dash. During the training process, we enforce the distribution of latent vector has a Gaussian distribution. We are using the regulation error term to enforce Gaussian distribution in the G space. Also, during the training process, we compare input images and output images X dash by using KL divergence cross entropy that has to be as close as possible. Once this variational autoencoder is trained, we can use from G vector to encoder for generation purposes. Each identity, different identities in the real space X may have different distributions in G space. And by combining different distributions in the G spaces, we, we may be able to generate on new images, X dash. Those are the basic principle of variational autoencoder. As I mentioned before, this kind of uh, architecture being used for generating images may will be combined together with transformer model. Uh, you know that a transformer model is a sequential model, then we may be able to generate sequential images like a movie in the future. Now I would like to shortly introduce diffusion model. Let's assume we have input image and we have next stage x1, x2 and finally xt. We are converting input image to X1, X2, and finally XT. I think this XT is equivalent to latent vector space. So sequentially, in the variational autoencoder, Encoder is made of deep neural network, so like CNN. Decoder network is made of deep neural network as well. Single 
deep neural network is able to convert input images to latent vector space. And the single deep neural network is able to convert latent vector space to real images. During the training process, we want to make X dash as close as possible to X. Of course, also, we are enforcing the distribution of Gauss, uh, latent vector space in a form of Gaussian distribution. Meanwhile, in the diffusion model, we, we are having noising process. Noising process is a kind of encoder. With the given input image, we are adding Gaussian noise sequentially, one step, one step, one step. At the final step, we have kind of Gaussian distribution in the G space. In the variational autoencoder, we are using encoder to convert from real images to latent vector space. But here in diffusion model, we are using mathematical formulation that is called Gaussian distribution. We are using mathematical distribution to convert input images to latent vector space. It is made of mathematics. The advantage of mathematics is that the process to convert from X0 to XT can be represented in a form of closed mathematics, closed, closed form equations. In the variational autoencoder, we are using deep neural network and we are using the deep neural network for decoder, but in the Diffusion model from, from the process from input images to latent vector space, we are using closed form mathematics, closed form equation. And during this noising process, we are, we are adding Gaussian noise. Sometimes I'm wondering why we are adding Gaussian noise to reach to the latent vector space. Probably in the computational world, each object will be represented by a Gaussian function. Probably that's the nature of God or that may be nature of information or that may be nature of digital world. And another thing is, uh, later on, I will tell you that by using Gaussian distributions, sometimes in many process can be represented by using the closed form equation. That is very easy for us to implement in the computer. Let's assume that we, we are in a uh, G space, XT. Now we have to come back to the original image that is called denoising process. It's a kind of decoder. And decoder, decoding process is called a denoising process, and it is uh, built up using the deep neural network. So in the diffusion model, encoding process is done using the Gaussian uh, closed form equation representation. On the backward, we are going to use uh, deep neural network. So we are converting from real images to latent vector space, and we will deconstruct the original images by comparing the 
original image and reconstructed images, we can define the KL divergence or entropies. Those will be used for uh, loss function. So again, in the up to now, most of generative uh, AI, in especially for image generation, are using encoder decoder architecture. Variation in the variation auto encoder, encoder and decoder is made of deep neural network. However, in the diffusion model, encoding process is a kind of noising process using the Gaussian noise injection. And uh, it, it will be represented by using the closed form equation. On the other hand, in the decoding process, it will be used by deep neural network. And it is called as denoising process. This is a short summary of diffusion model. Now, I would like to introduce forward diffusion process. As I mentioned before, in the diffusion process, we have noising process and denoising process. Noising process means the encoding process, and denoising process means decoding process. Now, at the first step, I'd like to introduce forward diffusion process. Let's assume we have original image, x0, then we're going to have x1, As I told you before, during the forward processing, that is noising process, we are intentionally adding Gaussian noises. And I would like to give you some formulas and I will explain the meanings. This formula represents noising process. This Q is the data distribution of each images. Q x0 means the data distribution of initial real images. When we are converting from x0 to x1, we are going to add Gaussian noise. How are we going to do that? A point, a point let's assume you have a image at this point, a image at this point 
is converted to certain distribution at next level. This point of data in the image xt minus 1 is converted to a Gaussian distribution. Who has average 1 minus beta t square root and the beta t variance? The data distribution xt is converted to certain Gaussian distribution. It has average and variance sigma. Usually this beta, beta t is a small number, 0.001. That means at each step, we gonna, this average will be little bit smaller than one. That means we are going to move from original point to two, little bit toward to two origin of this axis. And we're gonna have little bit of radius of variance in this dimensional space. Then uh, I'm not going to spend my whole class to derive the equations, but uh, if we apply this kind of process, a point is convert sample to a Gaussian distribution. Again, this new image will be sampled again to generate a new distribution. Sequentially, it will move to some distribution around the center point. and we are enforcing them to be a Gaussian distribution. That is very similar to the, the function of encoder in variational autoencoder architecture. We are enforcing Gaussian noise uh, distribution sequentially one step by one step by one step and then original image will be converted to almost standard normal distribution at the G space. If you start an image of tiger at the, by adding noise and noise and noise initially you are in the, in the G space your tiger data distribution might be such a Gaussian noise distribution. I'm sure it is not easy for you to understand you know, in this class, but this is what it is. But again, I would like to emphasize that by having, by adding this Gaussian noises, still, xt distribution in g space can be represented by x0 using the closed form distribution. And I'm not going to derive those equations, but that is the uh, advantage of Gaussian distribution. <clears throat> Let's assume that your input image has certain data distributions. By adding noises, this may be smoothed out and eventually it's gonna be almost in the G space, it is very similar to, not exactly the Gaussian function, but it will be similar to Gaussian function. So if you wanna know what is the distribution,
Let's assume your input image is a tiger. Then you have the data distribution of tiger and you have transfer function that is called as a kernel function to convert x0 to xt. By integrating this, you can get a g space distribution. This is a con uh, conversion from the input image to g space using the closed form. Because of this Gaussian noise, uh, noising, this conversion from input image to XT, it can be represented by closed form. Now, let me repeat this process again. <clears throat> so far, generate, there are many different types of generative AI for image generations. One of the very symbolic architecture is variational autoencoder. And we convert real images to G space and we reconstruct the fake images from G space. By comparing X and X dash, by minimizing that loss, we can uh, train decoder. Encoder is trained using the uh, regulation term, that means G space has to be Gaussian function. So once this uh, architecture is trained, we are using this decoder to generate new images. By having different combination of in G space, we can generate the new images. Meanwhile, diffusion model is another very popular generative AI model used in these days, has this kind of architecture. From, to convert from input images to G space, uh, we are using noising process. Noising process means we are adding Gaussian noises. And that process is, can be equivalent to encoder process. The beauty of this uh, uh, Gaussian noising process is that this, in each step during the noising process, we can uh, describe the data distribution at each step using the uh, closed form expressions rather than using the encoder. In this uh, diffusion process, we are using the Gaussian uh, closed form expression. Once we have XT in the G, G space, we have to reconstruct the original images. Also, later on, we will found that this reconstruction process can be also or uh, has a form of closed form. So, but closed form expression can be replaced by the neural network and then we can generate new images by having different combination of in the G space. And that is called a denoising process. Later on, I will tell you about those process. But at this moment, I'd like to talk about noising process. Uh, let's assume we have initial images Step by step, we are adding noises. How are we going to no, uh, add noises? We are adding Gaussian noises. Initial point, a point in the previous image, xt minus 1, has a form of Gaussian distribution at the next stages. Of course, beta t is small number, so we're going to, uh, the average point xt minus 1 will be become a little bit smaller number because square root of minus beta t. So the point will be moved a little bit towards the center of the axis. And of course, we're going to have small 
variance, small variance, and we're going to have certain uh, distributions. By adding this Gaussian noise step by step by step, I think initial point of image may be at the G space, it may have certain Gaussian distribution. Like if you have arrow, you may have certain distribution at the G space. This X0 and XT. If you have certain image distribution, you have to shoot arrows. Thousands of arrows, you may have certain distribution at the G space. Depending on whether it is a tiger, cat, or dog, you may have different distribution in the G space. But always a point in the original image space, they are directing to the center of the target and they may have certain distribu Gaussian distribution. By combining this all of thousands of this arrow together, we may have certain images in the G space that can be represented using this equation. Original image, you may have tiger or cat or dog. This is arrow. You have arrows one by one by one with different distributions. Tiger has this distribution, dog has distribution, and cat. Each may have distant, different distribution, but a point in each original image is injected to the center of the target. That transfer function is known as Cornell function. By integrating the original image distribution with the Cornell's, we're going to have a latent space vector distribution. And this, this original image can be obtained from the data. And this Cornell function that is transferring from original image to the target latent vector has a closed form because, because this noising process is done using the Gaussian distribution. I'm not going to spend whole hours of my class to derive the closed form uh, equations, but Thankfully, the mathematics of statistics, they already have done this. Then, what is the advantage of diffusion model compared to VAE? In the diffusion uh, variational autoencoder, we have to train encoder. In this diffusion model, we don't have to do that because we have closed form expression. So that is the little bit beauty of this diffusion model. So if our students uh, want to develop a new diffusion model, probably you have to make a new idea to convert from image to uh, latent vector space. And if you are able to deconstruct that to an, the original image, then you may be able to um, develop new generative AI. Now let's move to backward process.
Now let's talk about the denoising process. We have original image x dot. We have image x t minus one. X t, and finally we have x large t that is corresponding to the latent vector space. As I told you that during the noising process, by having, by injecting Gaussian noise sequentially, we was able to have closed form expression to make a connection from input image to noising process by Q x t x zero. With the given x zero, we can we are able to obtain x t. Qt, Qxt. By multiplying the input image data distribution with this kernel function that converts from input images to latent vector, we are able to obtain the distribution in the G space. I assuming that if you have your unique feature, unique features at your original images, you may have very different distributions at the G space. Of course, it is around the center of the uh, axis. Now, we also wanna have closed form expression of Q I'm not going to derive all these equations but because this is Gaussian uh, noise uh, noising and denoising we are able to obtain the closed form expression of this kernel function. So this means that if you know original images x dot x zero and you have current images x t, you can obtain the previous image x t minus one. So by adding this uh, kernel backward kernel function sequentially from uh, g space to x zero, we can come back to the backward propagation. This is kind of decoding. But beautiful thing is, it will be a form of closed form expression. Because this is Gaussian function, mathematician that has done that. But only requirement is that you have to have information of original data distribution. But during the training process, we know what is the original image XO, and we have this closed form expressions, so we, we are able to do analytically come back to original images. So beauty of this Gaussian noising and denoising is that we have complete mathematical distribution to convert from original image to latent vector space and from latent vector space to original images. But backward, during the backward processing, we have to have information about original image XO. But during the pro training process, we know that. But in a case of generative generation, we only go from latent vector space to images. On those cases, we do not have what is XO. So our intention is we're going to generate new function that convert to XT images to previous image that is represented by the neural network. 
So during the training process, we are applying the KL divergence cross entropy between this closed form expression and our deep neural network. By, by doing this training million and million times, this deep neural network is able to convert from latent vector space to original images, even though we do not know what is original images. So this P theta theta means model parameter of deep neural network, we will be able to generate new images. So let me go through this diffusion model again. So far, generative AI architecture has encoder and decoder architecture. Encoder is converting our real images or real text which is interpretable to human being to convert that human-driven or human-based data to computer-based data by using encoder. When we are generating new image or text, we are doing manipulation in G-space, and then we are using decoder to convert data distribution in G-space to human-based data distribution. Because of that, probably, I don't know, this is a kind of channel to talk to the computer world, to the human world. When we are generating new things, we probably may not be able to directly convert our original image to new images. Maybe human brain can do such a work, but in the computer world, we have to convert our thinkings into the computer thinkings and has to reconstruct the human thinking. By comparing the original human thinking and new thinking, we are comparing that. We, we want them to be as close as possible. And that is the loss function. Another interesting feature in this variational autoencoder is that if we convert human thinking to the computational world, it may have certain distributions. For mathematical simplicity and beauty, we are assuming our th human thinking has certain Gaussian distribution in the computer space or information space or gas space. So if you want to develop a new generative AI architecture, you have to uh, find a way to convert human-driven uh, data space to computer-driven data space and deconstruction. And another method are diffusion model. In the variational autoencoder, encoder and decoder has a form of deep neural network, specifically CNN time network. And to train the CNN app time network, we may need two different types of loss function. One of them is a regulation loss function that is enforcing G distribution as a Gaussian distribution. Second uh, a loss function is a reconstruction uh, a function. That means we have to compare X original image and new generated images as close as possible. You can use mean square error function or you can use KBL divergence function. In the diffusion model, we are intentionally adding Gaussian noises and each point in original space has certain Gaussian 
the distribution. And that transform function is called as xt, x0. This is kernel function. And surprisingly, because this noisy addition process is enforced using the Gaussian distribution, this kernel function is a Gaussian distribution. But if you have certain distributions of images you, by multiplying your original image distribution with these kernel functions, you may have certain distribution. Different objects in the real world may have slightly different distributions in the G space. Now, in order to reconstruct the original images during the training process, we have to be able to reconstruct from latent vector space to original image vector space. Because this is the reverse Gaussian function because of beauty of Gaussian, we have closed form of, closed form, I'm not going to show you in this class, we have closed form. Only the condition is that we have information data distribution of original images. That is okay during the training process. Now, but when you are doing the generating process, you have manipulations. For example, you may have certain tiger di di distribution and if you have a dog distribution, if you want to combine new images, which is 50% tiger and 50% dog, you can combine these two distribution. Then going backward processing, you may be able to generate new images that is 50% tiger and 50% dog. And, but during this decoding process, image generation process, we do not know what is the original images, XO. So we are having new deep neural network and during the data uh, deep neural network process, we want to make this DNN output as close as this close form expression using the KL divergence. By having repeatedly doing this, probably this deep neural network is able to reconstruct original images even though without knowing about what is the original images. That is the beauty of a uh, deep neural network. It is kind of guessing. They are training guessing. And during the guessing process, uh, training process, they are using closed form. This is reference. They are uh, using this reference closed form expression to do the guessing, guessing, guessing. After a million times, even though we do not know what is the original, so we can guess what it is. That is the uh, training process of diffusion model. Let's move a little bit further. That is called as stable diffusion model. As I know, the DALI that is shown up in the OpenAI uh, is based on stable diffusion model. As I know, original image is converted to latent vector using the decoder. This is my interpretation. They have encoder and decoder. They like this, this, kind, this area is very similar to variation autoencoder because they have encoder and decoder. But in G space, they have this diffusion model. Original diffusion model is converting to next stage, next day, finally at the G space by adding the Gaussian noises. 
but stable diffusion seems to convert real images to latent vector space. In the latent vector space, they are applying noising and denoising process. So it seems like it is a conversion of variation autoencoder and diffusion model. And another interesting thing is during the back propagation, they are adding attention algorithm. They are adding attention. So it is stable diffusion model is a kind of combination of variational autoencoder, diffusion model, and transformer model. At the, as I told you at the beginning of this class, uh, on Wednesday class, I'm going to review all this again one more time. Then I'll, I'd like to introduce reinforcement learning. Why this diff the generative AI has to be combined with reinforcement learning? And what is the key feature of the reinforcement learning? And I'm going to talk about that. And I, I'm sure it is a little bit difficult for you to follow up, but this is what is going on in the world of generative AI. Uh, thank you for your attention. I'm going to try to explain one more time on Wednesday. Thank you.